Hi, and welcome to day 74 of 365 Days of Art. Last time I prepped four mini canvases with gesso, four different ways, just trying to achieve the smoothest possible look. So today I'm gonna put acrylic pores on all of those and we're gonna see how smooth each of them dry. So I have them here. This one's gonna be the first one up. It's the really thick gesso and I'll let you know what each one is before I do it. And it was a bit of a trick deciding, hey, what kind of acrylic pour do I want to do on all of these? And I don't know if you've seen lately, but a lot of people have been having fun doing acrylic pours through strainers. So I went ahead, got some strainers off of Amazon. Personally, I taped the little holes on the bottom and try to show that to you guys. So here's the inside. I just didn't want to leak through the center. And another thing that I've noticed with the colander pours is people pour it through it and it has a really cool design at first, but then they have to tip it and stretch it out. And I haven't really been happy with any of the results that I've seen. So I'm taking it a step further and not only am I going to do an acrylic pour through a colander on all of them, I purchased a large turntable. So this actually spins, and what I'm hoping is that I can tape my canvases to the center of this, pour it through the acrylic pour, and as I'm doing that, I'm going to spin this, hopefully pushing the paint towards the edges and keeping that really cool design so that I don't have to tip it and distort it. I don't know if it's gonna work, but you know me, I love to try. That being said, let's paint. Here we go. Number one, again, this is the one where I applied two thick coats of gesso sanding in between and of course sanding at the end. I'm just taping it to the board there so that I can spin it around. There's my strainer. And this first one, I'm just gonna pour the colors directly on there. That white layer of paint is just so that your other fluid paints flow really good over the canvas. So you want to try to get the edges, but it, you know, you don't have to necessarily completely cover them. Again, I'm just taking the colors straight on the strainer this time. I'm spinning it a little bit, but this is the first one, so I'm just kind of seeing what's happening as it's falling through. And oh my goodness, spinning it makes the paint spread so fast and amazing. I love this immediately. I'm just going around the edges there and just kind of touching the paint and trying to make it flow over the rest of the canvas. And that's again what that white paint at the beginning is for, is it's to make your paint flow better so it doesn't stick. Just filling in the center there. Again, take the torch to it for any sort of bubbles. It's a really cool flower pattern. I'm actually really happy with how that came out. Look at that. Okay, next up, number two. This is the one where I did four coats of increasing consistency on my gesso. So I just made it thicker and thicker, starting with a really thin coat. I'm gonna do black for my base this time. Oops, you can see I didn't take the white off my little spreader there from the first one. Same thing, spread it around. You wanna get your edges. They don't have to be perfect and covered, but it will help your paint flow better. Once again, I'm just using straight color in my strainer. I'm just pouring it right in there. Starting to spin it. It was coming out a little more on one side. I'm still not sure if it's the way I was spinning it, where the strainer was placed, how I was pouring the paint in there. So I'm definitely gonna have to play with that, but I'm keeping all the same colors throughout all four of these canvases because colors do react differently on the canvas. And I wanna keep this experiment kinda as, as straightforward as possible. Keep all my variables very similar. Here we go, we have another one, pretty cool looking. Take the torch to it. Do enjoy this flower pattern. I'm looking for something a little more structured. It's kinda loose still, but close to what I want. Okay, number three. This is the one that has 20 coats on it. It's incredibly smooth. I'm very excited about this one, and I decided to try a dirty cup pour this time. I wasn't, I like the other colors, but I'm wanting a little something more. It's not quite the look that I've been going for. But once again, get those sides. I'm 
and grab my cup again and I'm just layering the paints in the cup using mostly a circular motion. Here I'm putting the black on one side and the white on the other side. More blue, more red. I'm hoping it's going to create a cool effect on the canvas the way I layered the paints. And there we go. I tried to spin it a little bit more this time. I'm hoping that that would give me a more even distribution of my paint as if I spun it around that way hopefully there wasn't too much paint or more paint on one side than the other causing a distortion in the pattern. And there we go. I actually super love this one. I know it's not as striking from afar as the other ones, but the way the colors melded on the palette was really cool. So I quite enjoy that. And final one. So for number four, this was the other one that had only four layers of the gesso, but I went a step further and I threw on some matte gel because I love how soft the gel dries when I put it on a surface. So that was kind of my last little, yeah, let's do something different and see if that gives me an even smoother surface when it dries because it's really good at, you know, being a barrier for the paint so that it shouldn't get absorbed at all by the canvas and I should just have smoothness rather than seeing any grain. Did the black again and for this last one I'm just gonna do another dirty cup pour. I decided to make red the main color on this one though. I did the same thing with the black and the white as I did on the other one though, kind of layering it on either side just on the corners. A little more red, a little more blue. And here we go. I tried to spin this one a little more continuously as I was doing it because I think that's really what I need to get those lines that I'm looking for. I mean honestly even the way the paint looks on the spitting table looks pretty cool I love how it spreads out like that and there we go last one that is actually my favorite one I'll be showing you guys next time the dried results that way you can see the designs and also see which one came out the smoothest okay see you guys next time bye